Welcome to TechFlow, my name is Alex and this is the 2017 Mini JCW Review. Let's review a car. So what guys, I'm about actually to chop this car in, not because I haven't enjoyed it, so please don't think that right off the bat. I'm just getting a new car. I want to experience a lot of different types of car. I would love, however, though, to get another one of these cars because it has been so fun and that is the sole purpose of why I want to make this video. I don't think many people realise how awesome this Mini is, especially with this being a JCW. We're going to go through the things I like about it, the things I don't like about it after my two years living with this car as my daily. Let's start with the outside. So if you get a JCW, please spec it with the DLRs because it's one of my favourite things about the car. So when the car is on in the daytime, you've got these awesome oval lights around the front headlights. Now this is actually different on the newer model, that's what I'm trying to say here. So the actual whole thing on the newer model is an indicator, but still spec the DLRs because I think they absolutely make this car. Now, there's no denying when you see this thing come down the road that it's a Mini. It has every single Mini aesthetic going for it. It has the lovely little plumpus wing mirrors on the side. It has its curvy, well, really curvy, more on that later because I actually had to get my windscreen replaced and it cost quite a lot of money because of the curvature. It's curvy windscreen up there, it's got its lovely roof, it screams Mini and that's because it is a Mini and you either love them or you don't. Personally, yeah, I think this, this thing is character, screams it. So my car's actually been paint protection filmed on the front bonnet and it really, really stands out on this car because of all of these lovely contour bumps and the lovely shape of it. The reason I bring up the paint protection film wrap though is because if you do see any little niggles like this up here or this down here on the front of the car, this is all to do with the car being wrapped and this is not the paintwork on the car coming up. This is simply because I've had the car wrapped and this is the wrap coming off of the car because I've had the wrap on the car for much longer than advertised. Regardless, love this honey chrome grille as well at the start. You've got the big bold mini logo right there. And then you've actually got one thing that does annoy me is fake vents on cars. More so now in the future, we've got all these electric cars and they're putting fake exhausts on. Just don't bother. They've got this sort of engine grill here. That, that's fake. And then this down here, there's a fake grill down there, which is really, really annoying. However, the grill on this side is real and is used for intake of air to cool the engine down. So again, like with the lights, make sure you spec your DLRs. I think the DLRs, if you spec them, they actually come with the beam forming lights. Now the lights on this car are LED. They are super blue in color, look really, really modern. They actually move when you move the steering wheel to light up the corners, which is awesome. Moving down here, I've got the 19 inch alloys on this bad boy, which make for quite a bumpy ride inside the car. More on that a little bit later. As you can see, the I've actually had to manufacture some crazy rims for this car because of the size of the brakes. Yeah, this thing's got a two litre twin turbo in there, so we need brakes to match. The problem though, with these contoured rims and my driving, they're kind of really easy to scuff on curbs. So be sure if you do spec these rims, buy the optional alloy insurance, which I have. I need to get the guys out to fix mine. And uh, yeah, just be careful of these because they contour really, really far out. So you've got the iconic mini side mirrors on here. These were actually red in color when I bought the car. They've been wrapped black. And then you've got, again, the iconic huge front passenger and driver windows. These things, by the way, do go down all the way and don't stick here like most of the BMWs. And then if we go back, we've got our rear window here, back lights, back window, and then the boot. How much space do we have in here? Well, you know what? I've had the thing for two years enough. 
it has enough space in here. So as you can see, we've got a box here which has got a drone inside of it, and then we've also got a bag here. You could easily have double this inside of here, but here's the thing that I really like about these minis. When it's primarily me driving in the car, which it usually is, it's super, super simple just to lift this up here and push down both of your back seats and then you've got a through massive loading bay to put things like suitcases. Now obviously if you've got kids then they're not going to be able to sit in the back but this is me, I'm 21 years old, it's mainly been me and my girlfriend in this car for the past, I don't know, sort of two years, it's not been an issue. We've got here guys our lovely spoiler, absolutely love this thing, very very iconic for the JCW line. Moving down, again our iconic mini lights, love these, ice white reversing lights as well which is what I like, as well as actually the number plate lights are ice white too which is very very modern. Moving down we've got our rear PDK parking sensors which are wicked, more fake vents. I don't like fake vents but they're here, they're very mini and they're okay and they're housing my absolute pride and joy. This was a £2,300 extra. Now please excuse them because they are very dirty throughout the filming of this video today. These are the carbon fibre exhaust performance tips on this car. This thing actually has a remote controller that you can double click and uh, yeah, it opens up a valve in these exhausts. This thing pops and crackles like nobody's business. More on that later. And while we're at it, let's do three things that I like and three things that I don't like. Let's start out with the don'ts. As I've already said, fake vents, no. Now this car doesn't have the keyless entry system spec on it, so you actually have to click a button to get into the car. Shocker. If that key then breaks, this is a thing that you can take off the door handle to use like a manual key to get in the car, and it keeps falling off. I've had to tape it on. I'm not sure why. Now you're probably noticing that these things are really nitpicky, like my next one, the windscreen. It's really, really curved. It has to be because it's a Mini, but this heated windscreen, because it's curved, is so expensive to get repaired if you have stone chips. So when you get insurance for your car, make sure you get stone chip protection so they'll come out and replace your windscreen if you get some bad stone chips for free. What do I like? These brakes, these lights, and this exhaust. Wait till you hear it. Okay, so inside of the car, off the cuff, Alex, what are you saying? Well, let's talk about the feel on, and, and the products used inside of this car. Any cheap plastic inside? Well, yes, there is actually. As you get into the car, there's this sort of cheap, hard plastic. But I pass that because you have these absolutely gorgeous lovely John Cooper work door sills here that take your eye off the cheap plastic and that is the only place you can really find this horrible plastic except from down here but again your eye is taken off of it because you have this huge ring down here which is actually functional we'll get onto that a little bit more that is the only cheap plastic in this cabin the rest of it is this sort of I've explained it before as like a it was like styrofoam, but a lot, obviously a lot more reinforced. I'd be worried if it was styrofoam, but it's really squidgy and it goes around the whole of the cabin and it's really, really nice and plush and it's probably not that expensive for Mini to manufacture. I think this is a really good idea to have in here and it works really, really well. Now, I spec this car out with a wooden finish on here. I was a little bit worried when I did it because I thought it could look a little bit granddad, but it's quite nice. I do like it. You've got the vents here that are, again, very Mini-like with the awesome lovely tr silver trim around there. It gives it an awesome, awesome vibe in here. And everything has a silver circle. So you've got silver circles around the vents, a silver circle around the infotainment system, silver circles around the heating. And while we're talking about the heating, I'll power on the car with our silver buttons here. And this is one of my favorite things, powering on the car, foot on the brake, the start stop button lights up with all its glory. And then you, and off she goes. She's now powered up. I'm gonna turn that off because that's a bit annoying. I'll leave it in uh, ignition on. So let's start bang in the middle. We've got our climate controls here. Very, very simple to operate. To turn on the climate control, you just do that on and off, that is it. And then you have zoned climate control. So this side can be whatever temperature you want and this side can be whatever temperature you want. And the temperature is in Celsius and displayed inside of the dials. And then you also get this lovely little sort of animation around the infotainment display as to whether you're going towards hot or cold or whether you're turning up the heating or turning it down. Ah, it's just a very nice little mini touch, isn't it? But this is our lovely screen. It's a nice wide screen. We click the menu button and we get all of our options. Everything is full screen, whether you are well, whether you're on the map like that 
or whether you're listening to music or radio. It's a whole widescreen, looks really, really modern. Here, these are some of my favorite things in the car. You have these buttons, one to six. Now these can be user-defined to do anything. So I have number one to display the onboard computer, number two for driving excitement, which actually gives you sort of power and torque numbers right on this number. Moving underneath the climate controls, we've got controls for our heated seats down here. We've also got our max AC buttons. This one right here is our heated windscreen, which I've already talked about. You can toggle that on and off there. Traction control, this button here hides our heads up display. More on that in just a quick second. And in the middle, like I've said, our engine start stop. Now, as you can see, the heads up display is just popping up right there. Now, this is gonna be really hard for me to demo what this does because you guys won't be able to see what's inside of it. But let me explain what I can see in front of me. Right here is a nice piece of glass, which I'm actually looking through to see the road as well as looking around it to see the road. So it's really, 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 really visible, much like just displaying it up on here, which other cars have done. And then in the daytime or whether it's sunny, you can't see it with this bit of glass. No matter if it's pitch black or really, really sunny, you can see everything on there. And it displays everything. Who's calling you, the navigation, your speed, what speed you should be going if you have the autonomous driving in this car, which this car does. More on that a little bit later. And yeah, that's the heads up display. Absolutely love it. I would opt for it as well. We've got Harman Kardon sound system in here. So you've got two subwoofers under each of the front seats. This car really does rumble and I would describe the sound signature as fun. The steering wheel feels really, really nice. You have these contours here, which make it really, really nice to grip. We're not flat bottom though, but we do have our JCW logo there, which is just a nice reminder when you're in the vibe. And then we've got our red stitching all the way around the steering wheel, which just gives it that little extra, yeah, I'm in a JCW feel. And then taking that even further, we've got red dials for our speedo around here. And then when you get up to about 120 miles an hour, this turns into a flag, as you can see. It's just little quirky things like this that make this car just an absolute pleasure to be in. I never even knew it did that. The more you know. That's really interesting. Well, there you go. Lots of movement here with the steering wheel lock that back in place and then down to the doors we have our mid-range driver down here and then we also have our front passenger left and right window openers here window openers so i'm going to call them i'm going to call them window openers unfortunately no back windows in this car and then right here this is where you can control those iconic mini door mirrors and then we also have our handle right here which feels really nice quality and then a lock and unlock for the car like there more soft touch plastics here and then the door yeah it closes and it feels premium can't complain so what's it like in the back of your mini everybody always asks me well it's really not that bad if you are under six foot you can get in pull that back there's plenty of leg room in here the seats are comfy enough you've got a adjustable headrest there so you can get that to the perfect height and then you work on your seat belt and you're fine. I've got ample leg room and I'm about five foot eight. Um, I would say you'd start to hit your head if you were probably six or more foot in height. So when I'm getting out the back, I'm gonna to talk to you guys a few things that I like about it and a few things that I don't, that I've found that I haven't liked about it over the last two years. A um, few things that I like, I love the cups, cup holder size, demonstrated by the size of this humongous lens. There's two lovely cup holders down here. I always use these when I go to the gym. I also love the center console. It's big enough to put anything in and it can also move back if you want it to. Some things that I don't like about it, I wish it had an electronic handbrake. Doing that just seems really old to me now. Um, maybe that's just me. And I also don't like the placement of this infotainment stuff down here. When the center console is down, this can be a little bit sort of, trying to access this down here can be just a little bit far away. I wish it was a little bit higher. Not really sure how else they could do that though. But that is essentially it. Those are a few things that I don't really like about the cabin and things that I like about it. Um, but I suppose, I mean, it's a JCW. You're gonna to wanna to see what this thing is like out on the road. So what 
is the JCW like to drive as an everyday car around town? Well, we're currently in town and I'm sat in what's called mid mode. Now the car has three different modes. You've got mid, which is what I'm in now. You've got eco, and then you've got the sport mode. The eco mode gives you the throttle response if you want it. And then the green mode, if I stick it over into green mode, I get a nice little prompt on the screen there. And there's actually a little mini game that you can play in the car, not to spill the fish tank, and now it actually changes the entire dynamic of the car whilst you are sat in green mode. So essentially, if I put my foot flat, that is all I'm allowed to get out of the engine. It makes it almost, I would say around 60 horsepower. You literally just can't put the power down. That's it. And then as soon as you put it back into, well, mid mode, it's all available for you. And it really, really pulls even in mid mode. Okay, so talking about the driving mode, you'd think changing these modes would change the steering. Now it does in a lot of other cars, not in this car. Unfortunately, there's only one set steering mode. Now the steering is very good. I've really got no complaints as we are in town. Talking about steering, this car points where you want it to point and goes where you want it to go. With it being such a short wheelbase, you wouldn't think that it would be so good at doing so, but it really is quite agile in moving itself around cars, like maneuvering around here, you point it, and it does just go really, really nicely. It feels like a premium car. I mean, it is at like a 30 grand price tag, I suppose, but when you're in it, you're driving a Mini. It's just super, super fun, and you forget about everything else. It's all about having fun. So I opted for the upgraded seats in this JCW. They're lovely bucket seats, really, really love them. They hold you in surprisingly well, considering I think these seats are most definitely looks over function. They definitely have all the functions that you would need though. You go up and down, front and back. The seats have like a really odd sort of mechanism to get into the back seat. You do have to reach your hand around the seat to try and find the lever. Is a little bit of a downside, however, I'll give it a pass. So we talked about seats. What are you going to be doing when you're sat in your seat? Well, you're going to be driving. What are you going to be holding on to? Your steering wheel. What's the steering like in the JCW? Now, when you change the driving modes in this car, it doesn't change anything to do with the steering like it would in other cars, like, for example, a rival, one of the rivals, the Golf R. When you change between the sport individual modes and eco modes, it makes the steering lighter and tougher, depending on what mode you are in. In this, it's sort of one for all, which I can't really complain, to be honest. It's good steering in this car. I can't really complain, to be honest with you. It is not too tight, but also not too loose. It is engaging. It is an engaging drive. However, I would like the option to be able to change it and have it probably a little bit more comfortable. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'd ever want it tougher at any point. I just sometimes want it a little more comfy, but that's just personal preference. But hey, maybe you'll love it. Maybe you'll hate it. I think it's lovely. The car goes where you want it to go. If you're going to point the car, it will go where you want it to go. And with it being such a short wheelbase as well, that's surprising, but you can take corners at some decent speeds. So with this being a two-door Mini Cooper, you've got these absolutely huge windows on either side. Now the rear windows, visibility is a bit lacking in there because you have the B pillars at the back. The one downside to this car with the visibility is the pillars. You have, do have these big pillars, but looking left and looking right, you have easy visibility out of these huge windows. But there is a lot of, mm, I want to say gunk. It feels like gunk. I do feel like I am in a small car, but then again, we are in a Mini. So what can you expect? Visibility, I would say it's probably, it's probably under par. So, the gearbox, as far as it being automatic is concerned, well, it's a fairly, fairly good box. If you put your foot down, it recognizes your foot's down, it changes down fairly quick. It's a rapid box. It's not a dual change box, like you find in something like a Golf R, only single in this. Like I've said, it's front wheel drive only in this car. But other than that, yeah, gearbox is fine. There's the odd time, the only thing I could pick at the gearbox, there's the odd time where you're actually in manual and you're using the paddles and you shift down to get into a gear ready to, let's say, overtake somebody. And then you put your foot down, try to change up a gear. It did it then absolutely fine, but sometimes it just doesn't change up. It takes a couple of seconds. It's as if it's just lagging a little bit, but it only happens ever so often. It's a really odd thing as well. It could only be my Mini that does it because it is really odd and it happens scarcely. 
gearbox is fine. Road feel in this car is adaptive. So when you have the car in the normal driving mode like I do now, yeah, it's okay. It's bumpier than most cars. It's a sports car at the end of the day. Um, you are gonna feel every single bump in the road uh, if you have one of these cars, even small bumps you will feel. Um, the rims on this car, fairly large. You've got not much tire to play with to get some dampening going on. So you're not really doing yourself any favors if you're wanting a nice smooth ride. But again, why would you buy or even be looking at a mini JCW if you're gonna be bothered about road bumps? The only reason you'd want one of these cars is simply to be in a small little mini and have a two liter twin turbo under the bonnet, feel every bump in the road and have an absolutely cracking time while doing so. It shouldn't be a concern of yours if you're wanting to buy a JCW. The road feel, yeah, it's bumpy. Like I've said, the main reason you will be buying one of these cars or looking at a review of a Mini JCW is because you want to go fast. This is inherently a small, fast car. You've got a 2.0-litre twin-turbo, twin-power turbo engine, more efficient Mini, say, under the hood there. So when you flick this thing into sport, you're going to get faster gear response changes. It's going to tighten up all the suspension, make those bumps feel even worse for you guys out there complaining about bumpy rides. And then, I always flick it in manual because that's the proper way to drive it when you're in sport. And to be fair, once I get around this corner, you can seriously full send this car and it is the most fun ever. Like it's just a little pocket rocket. It's amazing. Oh, hang on. There's one thing I forgot. If you're full sending it, you also need to open up your extra two grand's worth of exhaust that you've spent by double clicking this little button here. And now she should sound good as well. Oh, it's just amazing. You can't go wrong with it. Like, pops and bangs and everything. I love this car and I'm gonna be so, so sad to get rid of it, so sad. Okay, now, if you really do, and I don't recommend doing this, no car, no car manufacturer recommends doing this. If you really do wanna put that two liter twin turbo to work, this thing does have launch control. We're gonna do a timed zero to 60 for you guys. We'll see what this thing can do. Okay, so launch mode. You turn on the car. You put it into drive. You put it into manual. You put it into sport. You then, it's a lengthy procedure, hold on the traction light until the traction light comes on. Now traction control is deactivated. You hard press the brake, hard press the throttle until you see the flag. Flag comes up and off you go. One, two, 30 miles an hour, 41, 44, 50, and 60. Done. What was that? Six seconds and 40 milliseconds. Six seconds and 40 milliseconds to 60 in a little hot hatch. You can't really complain, can you? It's a barrel of fun. So there we are. Hopefully if you're looking at buying a JCW or just like cars, this video has been slightly insightful for you from me being an owner and living with this thing for the past two years. Final thoughts. Um, I mean, look at it. It's an absolute work of art. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous car and there really is no denying it. And it's also built with quality materials with it being partnered by BMW. You lift the bonnet on that, every single part has a BMW badge on it. This thing has been built well and has been built to last. It's fun, it's engaging, it's a mini on steroids. That is the best way to describe a JCW. And I really think if you are wanting to get one of these, then you should test drive one and be taken away by it. Would I own another one? No, though. That's the issue. I wouldn't own another one straight away. Maybe in the future, because it is a good car. I'm not saying it's not a good car, but living with a Mini definitely is a lifestyle. Like it's a Mini, you're gonna struggle to put things in the boot. You're gonna wanna put more people in your car. You're gonna have people complain about being in the back seats and, and being cramped and, and not having enough leg room. Like me having this car now for two and a half, three years. Yeah, I want to move on. I want to get a different car and experience something different because having a Mini is a lifestyle. They say you live the Mini lifestyle and I don't want to do it any longer for now. But that's not me saying it hasn't been fun whatsoever. I've enjoyed it so, 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 so much. I don't think another car 
on this planet, unless it's like something crazy, like a Lamborghini or an R8 or something, will put as much as a smile on my face as this 30,000 pound hatchback. My name's been Alex, this has been Techflow. I hope you enjoyed this different video. We'll see you in the next one.